Hi, I'm Norm Perello, a furniture designer maker at Perello Design and a woodworking educator at WoodSkills. And today I'd like to share my 30 years of woodworking experience with uh, best workshop layouts. Find out how to optimize your workshop for the type of woodworking you do. Workshops change. The type of woodworking we do evolves. Make your workshop space suit the type of woodworking you do now and in the future. Tools and machines take up workshop space. To be successful at woodworking and furniture making, you need a workshop that is free of clutter. The ideal workshop positively affects your mind and motivation. An organized workspace reduces anxiety and increases motivation. You will want to go into your workshop and make stuff. Our workshops are limited in size and this holds especially true for woodworkers with small shops. Every square inch of a small workshop matters. I will help you design your workshop and workflow around the furniture you create. Efficient workflow is a large component of successful woodworking. Easily moving around workbenches and machines creates a more conducive environment to furniture making and woodworking. You will hear the expression, a messy workshop is a sign of productivity where a clean organized workshop is not. Instead, it is the organized workshop that is the most productive. In every industry, organized workshops promote efficiency and save time. Eliminate the time to search for a tool under a pile, the need to constantly move things around to free up workspace. I'm sure we've all experienced this with, uh, with messy workshops and trying to find a tool. So it's uh, more conducive to having everything in its, in its correct place and a clean workshop with sufficient space to work around machines and uh, workbenches. So stay tuned and I will delve into this further with the rest of the video. I'm Norm Perillo from WoodSkills and I like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that I offer courses through WoodSkills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through the furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. And I'll start with how workshops evolve. The type of woodworking we do evolves. Uh, make the workshop space suit the type of woodworking you do now and for the future. In other words, scale the footprint or the workflow of your workshop to the type of woodworking or the uh, dimensions or the uh, scale of the furniture you create. If you have a smaller workshop, Try to minimize the, uh, the size of furniture you create. You'll need room for assembly, finishing within that same space most of the time, unless you have a separate assembly or finishing area. This is what I've done. So you need to have a good uh, amount of free space within the shop to maintain the, uh, the correct workflow. And I'll get into that. So it's easy to accumulate tools and machines and woodworking accessories and to get rid of them. So we purchase or acquire woodworking tools and accessories to make our woodworking easier and speed up tasks only to find out that setting up the tool or accessory takes more time than actually performing the task a conventional way. And I'll explain further with my transition to hand tools and how I've experienced the machines and accessories don't always make your woodworking more efficient. So in my 30 years of woodworking, I've experienced this. It makes me take a step back and rethink my needs are over my wants. I hardly purchase tools anymore. There, there needs to be a good justification for a purchase. Is the tool or, uh, or woodworking accessory going to benefit my woodworking or is it simply the latest fad marketed to make woodworking easier and more foolproof? And there's a considerable amount of uh, this occurring today. A lot of tools are uh, being created or designed with uh, very uh, efficient marketing to uh, to convince you that you're, it will make your woodworking easier when in fact just the setting up the tool, acquiring the tool, setting it up and maintaining the uh, tool or accessory over time and relearning how to use it each time will slow you down considerably over just perhaps just doing it by hand. To the subject of workshop clutter, we accumulate tools, machines, woodworking accessories and leftover wood offcuts and I'm, I've been guilty of this over the years and I've, uh, I'm trying to just share my experience and what I've done to improve my, my woodworking experience. 
Everything introduced in a shop, into your workshop, takes up floor or wall space. To be successful at woodworking and furniture making, you need floor space that is unencumbered and free of clutter. My current workshop is a good example of this compared to my uh, very early workshops which were a minefield, literally a minefield, very dangerous to work in. Kept impaling myself on, on bandsaw extensions and, and I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll discuss that in a bit. So you need empty space to move around and provide a work zone around workbenches and machines. Keep workshop equipment to a minimum and only what you actually use and not occasionally use or possibly use in the future. Decluttering your workshop can also affect your mind and your motivation. Knowing you are entering an orderly, safe and clutter-free workspace reduces anxiety and increases your motivation. I can attest to this. You will want to enter your workshop and make stuff. And it also reduces the dangerous component of a, of a workshop. Our workshops are all limited in size. And this holds especially true for woodworkers with small workshops, which uh, is the majority of woodworkers. Every square inch of a small workshop matters. A large workshop has more room to hide and store things. And this is, uh, this is a negative. It can be a negative. So in my 30 years of woodworking, I've had several workshops of various square footages. From a small 300 square foot workshop, my, my very early first workshop, to my current two level workshop. I transitioned from machines and power tools to mostly hand tools with occasional use of machines today. Although I continue to use the machines to process raw lumber, hand tools quickly take over. And this has led to a uh, much less uh, need for, for, uh, for space in my, uh, in my workshop. I've found that using hand tools isolates me to a workbench where I can do considerable more woodworking than going from machine to machine. So I've designed my workshop and workflow around the furniture I now create. And I can't uh, emphasize this more for, for you to do also. The scale of furniture is directly related to, uh, to workshop size. I don't take on large furniture projects such as beds and armoires. I work mostly with smaller furniture because I've scaled it down to the workshop size and this is uh, the gist of the whole, the whole talk here is about reducing the size of uh, furniture you create to the, uh, the suitable size or the size of your workshop space. So I scale my work to my workshop space I currently have, which is my current workshop. Efficient workflow is a large component of uh, successful uh, woodworking. Being able to move around workbenches and machinery creates a more conducive environment to woodworking and furniture making. And I've, I've found this out. I'm more inclined to want to enter my, my, my current workshop and create furniture than in the past when it's cluttered and it's just a mess and all you end up doing is shifting piles of tools or wood offcuts from one part of the workshop to the other. So I realized that a uh, a rolling cart would increase my productivity, especially when processing parts in small batches. Now, I've done a considerable amount of batch work, small batches, in the past and, and currently. I've designed a, uh, a rolling cart with large wheels and shelves, and it's probably the most used workshop accessory I now own, because I move it around to all my different workstations. And of course, I needed to create space in the workshop for a rolling cart to move around. And this single condition led to a complete reorg and decluttering of my workshop space. The rolling cart indirectly declutters as it needs a path around my workbenches and machines. So just the, uh, the fact of having this rolling cart, which I'll, uh, you'll, you'll see in the video, is quite beneficial to addressing my, my, my free space in my workshop. And uh, it's just this one item. So, if you have the opportunity, create a rolling cart and then you'll realize that you need, you need room for the rolling cart to move around between workstations and this will help you in designing or freeing up some space in your workshop. A workshop without clutter, where everything has its place, is a more conducive woodworking environment. Most woodworkers realize the need for organization and minimal to no clutter. Most woodworkers understand this, but it's, it becomes more and more difficult as, as you complete projects, you just accumulate wood offcuts and you start purchasing tools and then it, the only place for you to store the tools is within your workshop. So it just becomes a, a snowball effect of accumulation of tools, offcuts, and it just becomes slowly becomes more and more messy and uh, disorganized and, and cluttered. 
and I understand this because I've been there, I've made the transition. So I often hear people saying that a messy workshop is a sign of productivity, where a clean, organized workshop, not so much. Instead, it is the organized, clutter-free workshop that is more productive. A woodworker can move around with ease. Rolling carts have uh, room to move. Workbenches are accessed better. Overall, more efficient workflow in a organized, clean, clutter-free workshop. We see this in every other industry. Organized, well-kept workshops promote efficiency and save us time. It eliminates the time to search for a tool under a pile, the need to constantly move things around to free of workspace. We've all experienced this, trying to find a tool in a small workshop full of clutter. Where is the tool? So it takes valuable time away from your woodworking to locate that tool, and then you'll almost have to go through this process every time for all the tools you keep accumulating. Let's get back to uh, my current workshop. The upper level of my current workshop, or my work, uh, furniture making studio, makes very efficient use of both floor and uh, wall space. As you can see, wall mounted tool cabinets are mounted to areas of the wall that serve no other purpose. They're literally empty spaces that you, I can't really put anything into, so I've located my, my cabinets in those, in those spaces, and I highly advise you do the same is we all have wall space in our, uh, in our workshops. Workbenches are away from walls to maximize access around them. The rolling cart referred to earlier has room to maneuver around the workstations I've set up. So I, have, I, keep, a, I keep a path around my, all my workbenches and the few machines I still have in this, on this level. I have more machines on the lower level that I don't often use, but it's more of a, a dust collection uh, machinery level. Consider the type and scale of woodworking you do. Is your woodworking hand tool based? A mix of hand and power tools are also known as uh, hybrid woodworking or uh, use of uh, large machines. What scale of furniture or woodworking do you create? Do you create jewelry boxes, small furniture, wood turnings, wood objects? I began with, uh, if you looked at my earlier videos, I began the progression. I began with uh, creating small jewelry boxes in a smaller workshop and moved up to furniture and now I've scaled back the size of my furniture in this workshop or studio. So these are all factors to consider when establishing a workflow with, uh, with considerable free space surrounding workstations, also for safety considerations. So back to clutter, in my earlier workshops I created small batches of uh, jewelry boxes and humidors in a small, limited and uh, confined space. The workshop had no available space left to move around in. Dust was difficult to control. I kept running into machines, impaling myself. It literally became a dangerous environment. Productivity was also affected and I had to finish the pieces outside the workshop in another area, in a, a dust-free area, to be able to finish and assemble some pieces. This reduced the efficiency of my work considerably. So I asked too much of the space and learned a big lesson. So today my current workshop is several times larger and the furniture pieces I create are relatively smaller, smaller in scale than my earlier furniture pieces. This works well. There is no clutter, hardly any dust generated, because I work primarily with hand tools and noise is no longer an issue. I can easily deal with any clutter and enjoy a minimal setup, perform tasks with hand tools at every opportunity. If you've looked at my earlier videos, you'll realize I'm a hand tool advocate and I've, I've transitioned mostly to using hand tools. And if you can see the hand tools around me, this is one, just one area of the workshop at the moment and you'll see the other areas in the videos. So keep in mind, with your type of woodworking and the space you have available to you. Decluttering your workshop will also positively affect your mind and your attitude. Knowing you are entering an orderly, safe and clean workspace reduces anxiety and increases motivation. I can attest to this because in my earlier workshops with all the clutter and the mess and the dust, I was less inclined to want to enter it because it was just disheartening to see all that. And, you know, just starting a project when, when it's just when it's still a, a mess from the earlier project and all this uh, intervening cleaning up between projects and, and finding, uh, trying to find tools and piles and shifting offcuts around just to make space. Tools will be easier to locate, more space available for assembly as I've mentioned. 
all positives. Once the workshop is decluttered, there is only maintenance to keep it clean and orderly. And this, my current workshop is a good example of this. I've decluttered it, cleaned it, created a lot of space around the workstations. And so just there's relatively little to maintain it. I just sweep the floors, very little dust generated because I, of course, work with hand tools mostly. Some machines, of course, not denying the fact that we need to work with machines. I hope you uh, you've learned something through this talk and uh, you appreciate uh, how, how critical or important uh, decluttering your workshop is in, in your own woodworking and furniture making. And So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced and uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered and also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses and I offer also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and, uh, and woodworking in general. So enjoy!